Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. Today is March 28th, uh, 2022. I hope everyone is doing well. I feel compelled to pass along the following information, uh, facts that others may find helpful in regard to a 2022-2029 tribulation period time frame, and I say that as a possibility. I believe that a sovereign God is behind every day, every date, and every event that occurs in human history. There's never been a president quite like Trump in all of U.S. history, and many of you are familiar with the sevens that are associated the, with this president nor Biden for that matter, and we can see how things have rushed forward quickly in just the short time that he's been in office. The current administration doesn't really care about God, doesn't care about morality, the unborn uh, national sovereignty, uh, borders, the Constitution, law enforcement, runaway crime, freedom of speech, freedom of choice, the economy, inflation, energy independence, free elections, peace through strength, biological gender identity, racial equality, or science, or and we could just go on and on and on with, about that. Well, they do care about ice cream, so everything should be okay, right? The uh, consensus among foreign policy experts is that Biden has a once-in-a-lifetime chance to affect a world stage reset. Uh, but I, he's failing to do so. He's a lamb, not a lion. So why isn't he a lion? You know, we uh, may have had one in office if Biden had not came in. The prophetic plan must move forward. I, I just want you to see how God is working. We must earn, of course, God's grace. Uh, if you don't believe that, just look at the number of views that a video gets on that. It's in the millions, or at least in the upper tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. But if you preach the grace of God, you might get a few hundred views. And to me, that is one of the strongest indicators that we are indeed nearing the time of great apostasy if we haven't entered into that period already. Even the Muslims now have predicted Israel's demise in 2022. If you don't believe me, just do a, a simple Google search for the book. Ten Prophecies for the Demise of Israel in 2022. We are, without question, living in unprecedented times. We're living in perilous times, just as Matthew 24 described, as our Lord described. I'm going to put a chart up here on the screen for you to look at. Now, this is just some information that other watchmen can take and and, and use if they feel that it's helpful to them to, to possibly help further refine our search for this uh, what seems to be uh, an ever more elusive date for our departure here as the body of Christ. This, I want to focus on two primary dates on this chart. One is May 14, which many of you are familiar with, and the other being June 14. So we're just going to talk about these two dates primarily, which I find uh, intriguing because when I look at, at May 14, 2022, the first thing that comes to my mind is that Israel was reborn on that date in 1948. What many of you may or may not realize is that if you go to Torah calendar uh, and you look at the date in which our, the Messiah was crucified, you will discover 
that uh, just by a simple day count, you'll discover that the first Pentecost that occurred in the upper room in Acts occurred on that date as well. So I've got the beginning of the church, and I've got the, you could say, the, the new beginning of Israel, uh, Israel being reborn on the same day. Now, that's intriguing enough on its own. But now June 14 is more intriguing, uh, or just as intriguing, I believe. And, I, and I, I want you to take note that that's just a month away, a month forward from May 14. And many of you who have followed this channel understand where we stand on the 1290 days given in Daniel, that which has continued is taken away, that sacrifice, well, I believe we are that living sacrifice that is taken away. You have to have 1,290 days somewhere on the timeline. Now, most watchmen, most Christians, many pastors, Bible teachers, they simply look at Daniel's 70th week as being split in half, uh, 25, 20 days. You've got 1260 on the front end, and you've got a midpoint, and you've got 1260 days on the back end. That, that 25, 20 days is, I believe, is 20, it's, we're looking at 25, 50 days because there's, in my opinion, there are 1,290 days from the rapture to the midpoint. Now, you may, not be, you may not believe that. You may not have known that. That is our position here at Blessed Hope Forever. So we've always believed that there, was a 30, there, is, there will be a 30-day gap between the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. Why that is, is I couldn't answer that except that these are the days along a complete timeline. Now, actually, that's not a complete timeline. It's uh, the way we understand this here at Blessed Hope Forever is that the, the rapture occurs. There's a 30-day gap, which begins the first half, the 1260 days in which the two witnesses witness up to the midpoint or that they are killed. The, the abomination of desolation occurs. The Antichrist defiles the temple. That begins the great tribulation period, the final 1260 days to the return of Christ. But then the timeline goes on after the return of Christ to the kingdom, which is where that the 1335 days fits into the timeline, which would, which would occur from uh, the midpoint of the tribulation to the day in which Christ, uh, uh, the kingdom, the millennial kingdom begins. So you've got 75 more days after he returns to when the kingdom begins, the blessed day that was spoken of in Daniel. So there's a June 14 day that I've found so interesting that I just feel compelled to pass this along. Now, I hope to show you here that Adam uh, was created on a June 14 in 3979 BC. I'll try to put this up here on the screen. So I'll begin with that. So we would be looking at the tribulation beginning when Adam was created. Now, if that isn't intriguing enough, if we count from 3979 B.C. to, to 2022, we get 6,000 years. So the 6,000-year dominion uh, of Adam as uh, where he was given dominion would end in 2022. Now, that to me is also intriguing. But it goes on. I did a little research and I discovered that uh, according to uh, rabbi, rabbi, uh, and I have a hard time saying the word, rabbinical uh, literature, uh, tradition, according to Jewish tradition, the birth of Judah, which is where they actually get the name Jew, uh, Israel, was born on June 14. Now, folks, you just can't make this stuff up. Uh, I don't have access to internet sites where that I can 
I can sort of, you know, create this information and then, and then give it to you. And many of you are aware of the fact that Donald Trump, his birthday is also June 14th. Now you may ask, well, what does Donald Trump have to do with anything? I have uh, spoken up in a number of videos about the, the numerical sevens phenomenon associated with this president, Donald Trump. Seven, we know, is the number of completeness and perfection. And I've always wondered, ever since I started seeing these numbers, just why the, the number seven is so prominent in, in being associated with his name. I'm, I'm pretty much now, I've come to the conclusion myself that seven being the number of completeness and, and perfection, uh, it's, it's not as much that the seven, the Trump sevens is, is talking about the seven year tribulation period because the, the tribulation period is not an exact seven years, even though we tend to look at it as a seven year period. Seven is the number of completeness and perfection. And so just to kind of go back to the beginning here and go over this very quickly, again, just to, to sort of rehash this, if, and I say if, if the rapture occurred on May 14, 2022, which was when the, the church began, so we're looking at the church ending on the very date that it began, or the very feast day that it, that it began, it coincides with Israel's rebirth. And that's, that's fascinating, to me at least. Uh, I don't see how it could not be to you, uh, but it is to me. And then when we go forward 30 days to June 14, we're looking at Adam, the date that Adam was created, uh, the 6,000 year dominion ends, the birth of Judah, uh, the birth of Donald Trump, and Moses on that day receives the Torah. And of course we know that the Jews celebrate uh, that uh, Moses receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai uh, on Pentecost. So those are the two dates that, that I find so intriguing. Now, I did run ahead to look at a midpoint, and what I found was November 25, 2025. Uh, that's when the long, dark nights of, of the month of Kislev begin. The temperature in Israel begins to drop, and the daylight hours dwindle away. That would be the beginning of the midpoint on this timeline. Now, if we go on forward, uh, we have Christ then returning on May 8, 2029. Now, now that is a day of no significance. I haven't really found anything uh, really uh, 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 w what you would call overly exciting about that date. But does it have to be? Uh, if we look at Luke 12, chapter 12, verse 40, Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Now, what I find interesting about that May 8, 2029 uh, return date is, is that just prior to that, on April the 13th, Friday the April, April 13th, 2029, we're looking at the asteroid uh, uh, Apophis, uh, I guess that's how you say it, Apophis, this near-Earth asteroid, which uh, most likely brings along uh, with it a de debris trail. That's April 13th of 2029. It will be the closest asteroid of its size in all of recorded human history. So just to summarize, the church age could end the day that it began on a May 14th, Israel being reborn on a May 14th. The tribulation period then beginning June 14th, the day that Adam was created, ending his 6,000 year period of dominion, a day also coinciding with the births of Adam, uh, Judah, uh, and, and it's also U.S. Flag Day for whatever that's worth, as well as Trump's birthday. Trump was born on Flag Day. 
which I believe could explain the Trump sevens. And 25, 50 days uh, from May 14 lands on May 8, uh, which I said is it is a day of no significance. At least I haven't found anything exciting about the date other than the fact that if, if, if this turns out, this timeline turns out to have any significance at all, uh, and we don't have to just, you know, toss it out after, Ju after May or June, then, uh, well, that would be an exciting timeline. Just want to pass this along for your consideration. Other watchmen can take and tear this apart, maybe, you know, find part of it helpful. We're all trying to help one another. Iron sharpens iron. I love you all. I truly do. Rest in him. This is Steve. Thanks for listening.